Dying Light's Haran is a city living on borrowed time. The world of Haran is an apocalyptic sight to see. It's a world of danger and desperation. In both the city and the slums, the streets are littered with the undead. Abandoned homes, burning cars, and haunting reminders of what the world used to be like are scattered all around this world. During the day, Haran can feel like a playground for the player. Once they get past the initial weak weapons and low player stamina, the regular zombies no longer pose any threat to the player. This task is left for the special infected zombies, zombies like the virals and the demolishers. These zombies serve to remind the player that while from a gameplay sense the day is their domain, there is a deeper threat to this world. Unlike a game like GTA 5, in Dying Light you can explore the homes of the citizens of Haran. You can see how they used to live and what they were forced to leave behind as a result of the virus. The less destroyed home serves yet another way to subtly remind the player of what has been lost. The remnants of people trying to flee via bus stations and bridges can be seen. The main bridge exiting Haran is packed with cars, and the city's bus stations can be seen in a similar state. The remnants of people attempting to flee via these buses can be seen. From the luggage scattered all over the place to the undead standing nearby, who may very well be what is left of the people that tried to flee. The quarantine zones are a great example of the horrors the apocalypse in Iran has caused. The quarantine zones were locations where the military had failed to contain the infected and instead simply chose to block the area off from the outside world. These places were a slaughter fest when the outbreak first began. Now they serve as a place for the player to grind and gain survival points upon completion. But the horrors of what happened in them is still on full display. With all the destruction and death in the streets, both the slums and the city give off the impression of utter chaos. The situation is not handled, not at all. The residents of Haran hide in their small bases, never daring to leave unless absolutely necessary. Those brave enough to wander the streets often only find their death. As you play through the day, you can actually run into these survivors. The first type of these NPC survivors are the ones that are currently being attacked. These NPCs can be in the process of being bitten, be surrounded but still trying to fight off the undead, be trapped inside a building with the undead surrounding them, or can be found fighting off special infected zombies, such as the Demolisher. All of these survivors will be killed unless the player helps. There are also survivors that will attack you. These range from actively malicious people to survivors that are apologetic and are simply doing what they feel is necessary to survive. The most dangerous of these aggressive survivors are those of Ryze's thugs. These men are a part of Ryze's gang and can be found out in the world, doing stuff such as guarding a base or being in the process of securing a supply drop. They will always attack the player on site. All of this changes, however, once the player reaches the countryside. The countryside flips the gameplay loop of Dying Light on its head. Instead of climbing across the rooftops and being constantly surrounded by the horrors of the apocalypse, the countryside allows for a much more peaceful experience. While there are still plenty of zombies roaming the lands, the sheer size of the map makes the world feel less chaotic. The addition of a buggy that the player can drive also creates large sections in the game where the player does not have to directly interact with any zombies unless they choose to. In a similar way to how the player can traverse the rooftops in the city and slums, the player in the countryside can simply drive past the undead in a much more efficient manner than climbing over rooftops ever could. The massive size of the countryside also creates points in the game where the undead are scarce and you find yourself lost in the beauty of the world. The beaches in the countryside are the perfect example of this. Giant cliffs and widespreading beaches leading onto beautiful water that is all relatively untouched by the undead. A place where nature seems mostly undisturbed by the horrible apocalypse that is going on around it. The beach is by no means completely immune to the undead however. The odd abandoned car and the odd singular zombie shambling around remind the player that they will never truly escape from the nightmare that is the apocalypse. Going back to the main campaign of Dying Light, let's look at the group that is the tower. The tower is packed to the rafters. The people there are cramped and forced to live in small spaces. One room could be called home for as many as five people. This is not a group that is prospering. This is not a group that has conquered the threat that is the zombie apocalypse the same way some of the other fictional zombie survival groups have. These are a people that are desperate, aware that all of them are on a timer. A constantly shortening timer that is reliant entirely on forces outside of their control. That being the miracle known as Antizen. Antizen is the single thing responsible for the current survival of so many of Haran's citizens, and it is a fleeting miracle. Antizen is a drug developed by the GRE that fights off the zombie infection. While it doesn't cure the illness, it does prevent the user from becoming a zombie. 
This is not a perfect solution, however. Antizen is only a temporary fix. Without constant reapplication, the infected user will find themselves turning into a zombie. This is a constant point of stress throughout the game, as the production and distribution of Antizen is something the player and the people in the tower have no control over. Instead, they find themselves relying on supply drops, and are at a constant battle with the other major faction of Haran over these supply drops, that being Rise and his gang. This sense of desperation is a constant throughout the main campaign of Dying Light, and the situation only continues to worsen as the story continues. During the main campaign, the GRE decide to stop giving these supply drops, forcing the player and the tower to directly beg Rise for help. This constant increasing desperation continues through the game, as the GRE attempts to cover up the survivors in Haran and tries to bomb the city to rubble. Even the GRE themselves are desperate, as their main objective throughout the game is to obtain their crucially important missing research. The sense of desperation is truly everywhere in this campaign. As we have previously established, the daytime of Dying Light is the player's domain. But spend too long playing in the sun, and you may find yourself losing track of time. And as the sun sets, a feeling of dread washes over you. For during the daytime of Haran, you are the predator. In the nighttime of Haran, however, simply put, you are the prey. Dying Light's nighttime atmosphere is simply unmatched. Never in any other game have I felt so hopeless. It takes the feeling 9 year old you felt when the sun would set in Minecraft and turns it up to 100. During the nighttime, there is no game. You simply do your best to survive. Even as you slowly build up your character and your arsenal of weapons, making the daytime zombies just your playthings to toy with, the nighttime is something you will never truly conquer. The nighttime exclusive zombies known as the Volatiles are the most recognisable aspect of Dying Light. They are a masterclass in terms of zombie design. In recent media, there has been a tendency for zombies to be slow, non-threatening shamblers. Due to this, there are a large number of consumers of the zombie genre that are actively convinced that if a zombie apocalypse were to ever occur, they would be fine. But every now and then, a piece of fiction will remind us just how truly terrifying the concept of a zombie can be. Volatiles, in my opinion, are the perfect representation of this. Having a truly unique and terrifying design matched with their unrelenting pursuit of their prey that is put on full display for the player. As a child, these things terrified me. Even as an adult, they still unnerve me. I remember the first time one pounced on me during a chase. I remember the sheer horror in my friend and I as we watched the player camera was forcibly taken out of our control, turning around to show that a volatile had indeed caught us and that there was no escape. The weather in Haran's nighttime plays an extremely important role. At some points the world of dying light will be completely visible in the night, only for seconds later a cloud to pass in front of the moon, entering the world into complete darkness. The torch you are equipped with feels like your only hope, but playing without it however is an experience you must simply play for yourself. Playing without the torch turns everything I have previously described up to 11. Lightning storms during the nighttime of Haran makes for an impeccable atmosphere. Playing in the city part of the game especially allows for the world to truly sink into the darkness. As you run through the night, you are unable to see what lies beneath you. Be it the zombies shambling in the streets, the volatiles actively hunting you, and most importantly, if that ledge you are leaping off will lead to another rooftop, or if you will fall to your death. The only light you have during these thunderstorms is the odd burning vehicle, allowing for a chilling reminder of the hellscape you find yourself in. But every now and then, you will be treated to a spectacle of atmosphere in gaming. A lightning strike. For one split moment, the entire world will light up before you. You will be able to see everything. Every building, every zombie, every volatile will all be visible to you. And just as quickly as they became visible, they will disappear once again, before you can fully absorb the information that was just presented to you, finding yourself plunged back into the seemingly eternal darkness. The soundtrack in Dying Light elevates all of these themes that I have previously mentioned. During the day, Dying Light's soundtrack plays softly in the background, hoping to reinforce the feeling of despair. During the night, an eerie softer music track plays, really reinforcing how alone you are. 
You can hear the volatiles wandering around, hunting for their prey, and when a chase does happen, the music changes to a fast-paced beat that matches the panic in the player. The music in Dying Light never overstays its welcome, however. It doesn't distract from the game, and is a lot subtler than soundtracks such as Minecraft or Skyrim. It really is more of a background element that can be easily forgotten when you are playing the game, but helps to subtly reinforce the tone of your situation. In conclusion, Dying Light is a masterpiece of atmosphere and gaming. It's extremely effective at reminding the player, both subtly and bluntly, of the overriding theme of desperation that is ever present in this world. I'm yet to play Dying Light's sequel, but I do plan to, and I can't wait to see how that game handles its atmosphere, because it truly has a lot to live up to. The eyes of the world have been glued to the city of Haran for the past two months, following the outbreak of a previously unknown pathogen. It is not yet clear what has caused this gruesome affliction. The local government's Ministry of Defense erected a quarantine wall shortly after the outbreak. The global relief effort's steady stream of supply drops has sustained what few survivors remain in the city. The Ministry of Defense believes more radical action should be taken to stem the tide of this virus. The question is, are there still non-infected survivors in the city as the GRE maintains? And if so, will the Ministry still go through with a stated plan to annihilate the city in an attempt to wipe out the Haran virus once and for all? Whether by way of the virus or the Ministry's proposed plan, one thing is certain. Haran's days are numbered.